Hello everybody and welcome back. So in today's video, I'm going to be creating a wedding day makeup look for you all. This has been very highly requested. I mean, it is wedding season after all. And I'm also going to be sharing my tips and tricks that I've learned from being a working makeup artist. But before we get into the makeup, today's video is kindly sponsored by Majuri. They actually collaborated with Claude Home and they handcrafted these beautiful marble pieces to hold your jewelry. This is the little pebble one that I'm in love with. With. It looks so beautiful just everywhere around the house. You can have it on your bedside table, on a sideboard, or beside your kitchen sink. It is just such a beautiful piece. So these cute little sculptural pieces for your home are handcrafted from marble. And I love that because each piece is a bit unique. I love how mine has this little ring of veining and it's very sparkly. I think it's very special. I just love how this piece combines two of my favorite things, jewelry and home decor. So this has been such a lovely piece to my home. And besides this piece, I'm also wearing some of my favorite Majuri pieces. So on my ears today, I have the bold Bold pearl huggies as well as the pave diamond bold hoops and on my neck here I have my serpentine necklace which is my favorite necklace because it catches the light so beautifully and on this hand I stacked two of my slim singya rings so I have my pave one as well as my normal singya ring and then on this hand I have my beautiful green heirloom ring that I love so much it's one of my most worn pieces. So in the description, I'm going to have a link to my Majuri landing page, which will have all the pieces I'm wearing today. And that link can get you 10% off your first order. And of course, I'll link these pieces individually as well, including this beautiful marble piece. So now before we get into the makeup, I would love for you to subscribe if you haven't already, and let's get into it. So let's start off with skin prep, and it is very important to go in with products you know your skin likes. My biggest suggestion is to not go in with any special masks or anything like that that you've never used that is a very risky and if you want to exfoliate try to exfoliate the day before or even two days before because you don't want to have because you don't want to have any redness or anything like that you just want to have some really nice hydrating and calming products underneath your wedding makeup so the first thing I'm going to be going in with is my summer Fridays cloud dew oil-free gel moisturizer I have an oilier skin type and gel moisturizers are the best for that because they keep me hydrated but it does not make me feel greasy throughout the day. Also, I have found that simpler is better because you do not want to risk the chance of your products pilling on top of your skin prep. So next up, I'm going to be going in with my SPF. Please use the SPF that you like the most. My current favorite is the Belief the True Cream Aqua Bomb Sunscreen. This is an SPF 50. And the last thing that I would highly suggest going in with is a lip balm or a hydrating lip mask. I'm going to be using the Summer Fridays Lip Butter Balm in the scent Vanilla. So now for primer, I'm going to be going in with the Milk Hydro Grip Primer because this is a really great one for longevity. It really sticks your makeup to your face all day. And I'm also going to add some of the Auric Glow Lust on the high points of my face. You can apply this all over underneath your foundation if you'd like to, if that's more your vibe, but I just prefer it on the high points. I'm using the shade Selenite, which is a lighter shade, so it's really going to amp up the glow. So now for my foundation, I have two suggestions. These have been really good for a majority of clients in the past. This is the newer formulation, but I used to have my kit stocked with the Makeup Forever Ultra HD foundation. It's really good. It pairs really nicely with most skin types and it also looks really natural once it's on the skin. And another one that's perfect for weddings is the Armani Luminous Silk. This one also gets along with a majority of people as well. I'm going to be going in with this one today. I'm using the shade 5.9. I really like this one because it has such a thin consistency and it's super undetectable. So I like to go in with a foundation brush first and I like to build up the coverage as I go. So I try to start with a minimal amount and I stretch it as far as I can before dipping my brush back into my foundation. 
And before we get into the other products, when it comes to wedding makeup, you're going to want to exaggerate it a little bit because you want it to show up a bit more in photos. And a lot of people are going to be looking at you from afar. So you just want to exaggerate your features a little bit more than you would on the everyday. And really make sure to buff the excess that's on your brush down your neck so you don't have like a nice mask line or anything like that. Make sure to get it on your ears a little bit and in your hairline. You don't want it to cut off anywhere. This foundation is awesome because it gives such a diffused look to your skin, but it also adds a lot of glow, which is perfect for a glowing bride. And then I like to follow up with a dampened sponge. Make sure it's just damp. Squeeze out the excess moisture onto a towel because you don't want anything to separate, but I like to pat over everything just to make sure it's as skin-like as possible. This is a Kosas sponge. And now for my concealer, I'm going to be using the Lancome All Over Concealer in the shade 250 Warm Bisque. I like how this concealer pairs with this foundation. I feel like the textures match each other really nicely and this one has a lot of coverage for a very thin wearing formula and it also has a matte finish which will aid in the amount of powder we're going to be going in with in a minute. I have found that going in with minimal powder is the best which kind of feels a little bit odd because you kind of automatically want to go in with a lot of powder since you want your makeup to last all day. But the thing is, you are going to be sweating and crying just because there's a lot of nerves and emotion that comes with wedding days. And when sweat and tears make contact with powder products, it does kind of make a paste. And that's really, really hard to touch up during the day. So it's better to go in with minimal powder in the beginning and touch up during the day when you need it instead of trying to deal with a pasty mess early on in the day. This will just prolong it better and it's going to keep you looking fresh all day as well. So for my powder, I'm going to be going in with the e.l.f. one. This is the only time I'm going to be using a tinted powder. When you're going to touch up your face, you want to use a translucent one, one that is clear, uh, kind of like the Pat McGrath under eye powder. I would actually use this on the face during the day just because it's very thin wearing. It's not going to add more coverage. Therefore, it's not going to cake up your skin throughout the day. I'm just going to take this brush and I'm taking just a little bit and I'm going to be patting it under my eyes. I'm not going to be baking. I'm not going to put any excess powder anywhere. And at this time, you can also set the areas of your face that you tend to get oily if you do. I am going to be setting my forehead right now with a little bit. Same with the center of my cheeks here and my chin. So now I'm going to start adding some definition to my face and I'm going to be using my Patrick Ta Cream Contour and Powder Duo. This is awesome because you get a two-in-one situation here and this is such a great formula. It's really easy to use. So I'm going to be starting off with the cream, which is the contour side, and I'm going to take a little bit of product on this flat brush. This is a Moda Pro Sculpt brush. I'm going to take some off on the back of my hand and I'm going to start accentuating the hollows of my cheeks and I'm just going to keep it around one and a half inches away from my ear. I don't want to bring it in too far because then it's going to look unnatural and kind of like a strip across your face and once you've placed that you're going to want to blend it backwards and really blend it into like your hairline and your ear. You don't want it to stop awkwardly. I'm also going to add whatever's left on my brush on my jawline. Be careful with this, especially in natural lighting. It can look very, very obvious. So just minimal product is very effective there. And if you do end up adding too much, just go in with your foundation brush. This is going to take it down the perfect amount. And it's also amazing that we didn't set it with powder. So it's still editable. <laughs> now I'm going to be taking the powder side. I'm taking my Moda blending fan brush. And I'm going to take a little bit of that. I am going to knock off the rest on the palm of my hand and I'm going to start on my forehead. I like to use bronzers on the forehead rather than contours because you're not going to have like a natural shadow here at all. It's going to be warmer. 
And usually I will apply this on my nose and my chin, but I'm just going to be adding the bronzer in this instance just to warm up the complexion of my skin so we have a bit more dimension and it's not so flat looking. I didn't dip my brush back in at all. I'm just going to pat it over that contour a little bit higher on my cheekbone. Now for highlighter, I'm actually going to be going back in with some of the Auric Glow Lust. I would suggest to use a cream highlighter rather than a powder one because in photography, powder highlight can look really chalky on the skin and it can accentuate texture a little more so than you want on your wedding day. So a cream or a liquid is the safest option. It really sinks into the base of your makeup and looks very natural and very flattering in photography. So I'm just going to be melting it with my finger. And now for blush, similarly to the highlights, I like to go in with liquids or creams just so that it sinks into the skin and looks like your skin. I am going to be using the Rare Beauty ones in the shade Encourage and Hope mixed together. Um, these are fantastic because these are super long wearing for creams. They're going to stay on your skin all day and they're not going to fade away. So I'm going to take a little bit of each in the palm of my hand and you just need the tiniest amount of this. I'm going to be taking a bit more Hope than Encourage and I'm just going to mix that around with my finger. And then I'm going to take a nice little brush like this and I'm going to swirl my brush in that mixture and tap on the back of my hand just to remove any excess and to gauge how much I have on my brush. This is my preferred way to apply these. It, it just makes for the best application and you don't overwhelm your skin with too much blush. So I like to apply the blush kind of in between my bronzer and my highlighter right on my cheekbone for a lifted effect. I think this is very flattering for most face shapes, but if you have an area of your face you like to add your blush on more, go ahead. I'm amping it up just slightly, just because I want to look happy. I mean, I'm sure you're going to look happy anyways, but just exaggerate it a little bit more. <laughs> So at this point, I'm going to pop off camera to prime my eyelids as well as do my eyebrows. I don't have any special tips or tricks for your eyebrows, just do them the way you like. So I'll do that and I will be right back. So now moving on to eye makeup, I'm going to be going in with a couple things. So for my eyeshadows, I'm going to be using my Charlotte Tilbury The Super Nudes Easy Eye Palette. Now this one's fantastic because you have everything you need to construct the perfect eye look. And these shadows in here are very unique because they're not like classic matte eyeshadows. They have dimension to them and they're really easy to work with. As you can see, they have like a little bit of a sheen. It's not a satin or anything like that. You can't see any visible pearls or glitters. It just looks very hydrating and beautiful. So it's gonna look dimensional and very eye-catching. And I'm also going to be using some of the M Cosmetics Cosmic Pearl Dewy Eyeshadows. These scream wedding eyes to me always. They're stunning. You only need a little tiny bit of them and they are so reflective. They're not glittery. They have a really nice satiny sheen that is just so light reflecting and they also don't look dry or crepey or cakey on your eyelids. I have two shades right here. I have Moonbeam as well as Wish. So this is Moonbeam and Wish. I also wanna do a couple of wedding look videos like this. This one's just going to be like my basics and some of my tips and tricks. Um, but yeah, let me know if you wanna see some other variations as well. I think it could be really fun. I'm going to set the upper part of my lid using the e.l.f. powder I went in with earlier. Um, this is going to help us create a really nice smooth blend with no choppiness or harshness at all. So you're just gonna set this part of your lid and it's also going to help diffuse this area as well. So now jumping into this Charlotte Tilbury palette, I'm first going to be using this light shade right here to kind of sculpt out the look. I'm using this Smith 237 brush and I'm going to go a little bit higher than my crease. And you wanna hold your blending brushes pretty much near the end 
just so that you get less control and it will just help to blend the shadows better especially in the transition but as you get more detailed you want to choke up on the hold of your brush just for this blended part though you want to have very light strokes with not a lot of pressure then i'm going to switch to a smaller brush this is another smith brush it's the 230 brush and i'm going to dip into that one right there and i'm going to start blending that on the outer portion in smaller circles I'm kind of holding my brush in the middle this time because I want a little bit more pressure and detail here. But you wanna bring a little bit of that into the transition just to add more definition. Now I'm going to slowly incorporate the dark brown right here. Boop, 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 that one. And I'm going to place a little bit more concentration on my actual eye and I'm gonna start kind of flicking it out in a shape of a wing. I'm going to swap to an even smaller Smith brush. This is a 233. I'm gonna do the same thing with that darker brown. I want the most pigmentation right here. This is where we wanna exaggerate. Now you can keep this all matte or blended like this if you want. I kind of made it a little bit more structured. I thought it would add a little bit more spice to this, but I'll show you a blended version first. I'm swapping over to a nice angled brush and I'm going to concentrate that even more near my lash line. Okay, so here is a blended look. Then you can go in with this if you don't wanna um, sharpen up the wing portion. But now I'm going to take this super small brush with some of the Maybelline Smoky Eyeliner. This is a Moda angled eyeliner brush. It's very, very small and precise. And I'm going to pick up a little bit of this pencil and I'm gonna do the same thing as we did with the shadow. And this is a really perfect eyeliner formula because it does just blend out kind of like an eyeshadow, but it's gonna create more longevity since it is an actual eyeliner. And little by little, I'm sketching out a wing. Now I'm taking that angled brush I was just using and I'm dipping into a little bit of the black and this brown again. And I'm going to lay that on top just to add that same finish. And there we have it. Now you can make the decision to keep it matte like this. I think this looks stunning as well. Or you can go in with a shimmer. I'm going to be using the shade Wish to begin with. And I'm going to be placing a majority of what I have on my finger right on my mobile lid close to my lash line. This is where I want it to be the most intense. And then I'm not dipping back in, but I'm going to pat around the edges to scatter the shimmer so we don't um, end up with anything too harsh. And you can go in with your blending brush, which I will in a second after I build this up to my desired point. Taking that blending brush and I'm just gonna flick away and kind of diffuse that even further. And I'm taking my angled brush with a little bit more of those eyeshadows to knock off the sheen. And now for my lower lash line, I'm going to take that first shade we went in with, this lighter contour color. And I'm going to bring that all along my lower lash line. And now I'm going to pick up a mixture of these two browns with that same little ColourPop E29 brush. And I'm going to concentrate it right here. I'm not going to connect it much. I just want the definition to be right there just to really widen out the eyes. And then my final step is adding this Moonrise shade in my inner corner. This one's very bright, which I love for a wedding look. Now I'm going to give my lashes a good squeeze. I like to pinch my lashes three times. So once near the base, here I'll show you. Once near the base like this, I squeeze like a couple times. Then I go halfway through my lash, do the same thing, and then I go near the ends and I do the same thing. 
this will get a good long lasting curl. And then you can apply whatever mascara you like the most. Um, a couple of my favorites are the MAC Stack Mascara, the Rare Beauty Mascara, or the one I'm going to be using today, which is the Ilia Limitless. This one achieves really nice volumized, separated, lengthened lashes. And you can make the decision if you wanna go in with some strip lashes, the ones I would suggest the most are like Ardell Demi Wispies or the Kiss ones with a very thin band. Um, I feel like they just always look the best. I think I'm going to skip out on falsies today. I think this is enough for my lashes. Before I went in with mascara, I forgot to mention that I would suggest a waterproof mascara the most. I just don't have one currently in my collection, but that will be better for the tears. So here are the eyes all finished. I think this is perfect. Really brings a lot of attention to the eyes and I love the texture of these mattes. They're so rich looking. So now let's move on to lips. So for my lips, I'm going to be using a hydrating combo today just because I have found a lot of brides don't drink a lot of water that day and sometimes your lips can look more dehydrated when you don't have enough water. So I like to use glosses and things like that. Although you'll have to touch it up more, it looks more fun, it looks really great in photos and it just makes your lips look way more plump than if you were to go in with a matte liquid lipstick or matte lipstick in any texture. So I'm going to first line my lips with the MAC Subculture Lip Liner. It's a nice pinky color. And I'm going to overline slightly. So I like to go under my lip, right here. But I don't go under my entire bottom lip, just in the center. And I'm also gonna fade this color a little bit onto my lip. And then for the Cupid's bow, I'm gonna do the same. Overline slightly and then I'm going to underline in the edges. So you want to slope it here. You don't want to have like a cutoff. You want to slope it until you get under like so. And then I'm going to be going in with the Glossy Ultra Lip in the shade Villa. It's another gorgeous pinky color. This just adds so much life to your lips. And it's a tinted lip balm, so it's going to hydrate your lips as the day goes on. And then finally, I'm going to add a little bit of this Laura Mercier Lip Glacé in the shade Rosé 125. Just gonna add that to the center. This is really light in color. So it's going to add a bit more dimension to your lip combo and add a lot more shine. And there we have it. And all of these products don't create those lip lines at all. So you can talk and you're not gonna get those strings at all. And here it is. Here is the finished wedding makeup look. So my last tip is of course to have a touch-up kit. This is the only little bag I had. Hopefully yours is a bit smaller. But inside here, you're going to wanna to pack a brush to apply some powder. You're gonna to wanna to pack your translucent powder for touch-ups. If you are wearing strip lashes, always have a glue on hand just in case if things start lifting. I would also suggest throwing in here a little um, pack of Kleenexes. I don't have any on hand, but those are great to wipe off your lips if you need to reapply the entire combination or if you need to like catch your tears. Obviously, you're gonna wanna pack your lip combo and whatever else you think you're gonna need to touch up your makeup, but these are the things I I would say you need to have on hand. Now let one of your bridesmaids hold this all day for you so you don't have to lug it around. I just wanted to say another huge thank you to Majuri for sponsoring today's video. It means so much to me and it's always so fun to work with you guys. I'll have links to all of the pieces I'm wearing in the description down below as well as this beautiful structural piece. If you do have any more questions about wedding makeup, please ask them in the comments down below and I'll make sure to address them in my next 
wedding makeup look video but that's going to be it for me today you guys thank you so much for watching i really hope you enjoyed today's video and found it helpful if you did make sure to give this video a like it would help me out a lot and i will of course link all the products i used in today's video in the description down below so feel free to check that out and i will see you in the next one bye guys